Hey, I'm Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. You know, people say there's two things you can rely on, death and taxes, but there's another thing that we can rely on, and that is every year the seasons will come. Winter comes around about every 12 months uh, in my observation. And you know, winter is uh, obviously the time of the year that we burn most of the fuel to heat our homes. And we have what we call the shoulder months, the spring and fall when, you know, it might be close to room temperature, a little bit above, a little bit of below, and we're not really doing a lot of heating and cooling. Then we have the summertime where we're using a lot of electricity for air conditioning. But if we want to make our houses more energy efficient and certainly more comfortable, and we want to save money on our fuel cost, this is the time of the year that we have to get our home to perform so that we don't let heat leak out of the house and cost us uh, all that extra money in, in fuel. And today it is uh, 31 degrees, as you can see, it is winter. And this house uh, obviously is a very large house, um, but the homeowner is spending an extraordinary amount of money uh, heating the home. Uh, I guess it's uh, probably average for the size home that it is. Uh, and we're going to fix this problem and dramatically uh, reduce the heating cost in this home and make it more comfortable. Come on, I'll show you. To make a house more comfortable, less drafty, more energy efficient, and less expensive to own, Dr. Energy Saver focuses on the attic. That's the A priority. Why? Well, because warm air rises and when it rises, it leaks out of the top of the house. And then, because air leaked out, new air has to leak in to replace it at the bottom of the house. So new cold air leaks in at the bottom of the house. So if we can stop air from leaking out at the top of the house, then we can dramatically reduce the amount of air exchange in the house and keep the heat that you paid to uh, heat your house uh, with in the form of fuel bills in the house much longer. So here we are in the attic of this home, and as we said, it was 30 degrees out. Well, what's the temperature in the attic? Well, we can see the temperature in this attic is about 47, 48 degrees. Now, hold on, this is a vented attic. We can see the soffit vents down there, and all around the perimeter of this house, there is soffit vents letting a cold air in, uh, and there's ridge vents, as you can see, all along the ridges of this house to let the air from the attic out. Now, why do they put vents in? Well, because we want to let uh, humid air, so the warm humid air leaks up from the house. We don't want it to condense into condensation on the bottom of the cold roof deck, so we vent that moisture out. Uh, another reason for venting a roof uh, might be to uh, allow excess heat out in the summertime, and that's certainly a consideration, but it's, it's not the main uh, function. Uh, and then uh, finally, another reason to vent a roof is to prevent ice damming, and we certainly have some ice damming on this house, and ice damming is when the heat from the house melts the snow on the roof from underneath at the roof shingle level, the water runs down under the snow, and it gets to the eaves where it's no longer under the influence of the heat from the attic, and it refreezes at the eaves. Then the next generation of water comes down, it refreezes, it builds up a big ridge of ice at the edge of the roof, and now water can't run off the roof at all because it hits that ice, it goes up underneath the roof shingles into the house, and then damages drywall, cabinets, flooring, and everything else is very destructive. So these are the reasons we would vent the roof. So if this roof is vented, and it is well vented, every soffit has a vent in it, every ridge has a vent in it, why is the attic 19 degrees warmer than the outside? I mean, this is considered exterior space. Why should it be warmer than the outside if we're continually uh, letting outside air uh, into it? And the reason is that we have heat from the house leaking out of the house, up through the ceilings, and through all the ductwork, into the attic. So we're heating a space, the attic, that we don't want to heat. There's just wasted energy, wasted fuel, and we're taking heat away from the house where we want it to make the people comfortable, and we're putting it into the attic, which then is completely lost because it just runs right off the ridge vent. Traditionally, we would go into a home and seal all the leaks in the ceiling. These include can lights, the attic pull-down stairs, 
the top of walls, even interior walls, where they meet the ceiling is a place where air can get up uh, into the attic. Wire penetrations, pipe penetrations, around the chimney, around the fireplace flue, at the junctions of various building assemblies, we have lots of places where air can leak into the attic, and typically we would seal all those. But in this house, we're making a different decision. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the thermal and air barrier uh, of this house on the roof. In other words, we're gonna make the attic a conditioned space. Why are we gonna do that? Well, look at this attic. It is filled with trusses. We have multiple level ceilings. So the ceiling in one room might be seven and a half feet. The ceiling in another room might be nine and a half feet. So <clears throat> this makes for um, lots of wall assemblies that where air could leak into the attic and, and there's so much to fix. Let me show you another reason why we've chosen this method. Here we are in just one of the bedrooms and if we look at these ceiling penetrations in this room, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen can lights in one room. And each one of those can lights allows air from the house to get into the can light fixture through the ceiling and then leak out of that fixture into the attic. So this house has well over 100 can lights in the ceilings and all those would have to be sealed if we uh, did uh, the uh, job in a traditional manner where we're sealing the ceiling from leaking air into the attic. Instead, we're gonna seal the roof, and then we don't have to worry about leaks in the ceiling. We also have uh, one, two, three, four duct penetrations. Those are leaky as well. Air from inside here, when the air handler is off, can get into the attic. We also have a smoke uh, detector, and we also would have the top of the walls all around the perimeter to seal. And we have a fireplace, so around the flue here is another air leak into the attic that we would have to seal and I'm sure there's wire holes and so forth in the top of these walls that would have to be sealed. So this is just one room. So all that is eliminated with this method. Here you can see uh, the remnants of an ice dam that was here uh, last week. And this is a major problem for this homeowner. Every winter this happens and it doesn't help uh, the shingles either. It really beats up the shingles. You can see that this uh, roof is a slate roof and here's a, another slate that has uh, been uh, cracked and, and uh, fell off the roof because of the ice and uh, this happens every winter. And when the ice damming uh, event happens, there's leaks inside. When that ice dam happens, the water leaks right into the house and you can see it's damaged the wall here. And this is gonna be expensive to repair because this is a sponge paint job here and uh, this is all gotta be stripped off and then the, the paint job has gotta be uh, redone and that paint job runs all the way through that room upstairs and all the way through a long big hall down here so it's got a match and uh, it's uh, it's not good. Another big factor is that in this attic there is tons of ducts and there's two heating and air conditioning systems uh, one on either side of the house and look at all the ducts connected to here and in the summer this attic is 120 degrees and you're trying to make 55 degree air uh, with your air conditioning system and push it through these ducts and that cold air is gaining heat on its way through these hot ducts because they're in a 120 degree attic uh, on the way to the room so you're losing energy there and the opposite in the uh, winter we're trying to make 120 degree air with our furnace we're running it through these ducts but the ducts are cold because they're in a cold attic and we're losing heat through the ducts on its way to the rooms and that is just going to make our rooms less comfortable, going to make our uh, furnace run longer to bring the heat up to temperature because we're losing a lot of that heat into the attic. And I can feel the heat coming off of these ducts right now. Even though they're insulated, they're just a little bit of insulation and you are heating your attic when you have ducts in your attic. So after we do this method, making the attic condition space by putting closed cell spray foam on the roof, this attic is part of the condition space of the house and it won't matter. All these air leaks, all this heat coming off the duct, won't matter at all. An important way that we measure the results of foaming the roof in this house is to check the overall air leakage in the house before we did the job and then after. 
and we're going to use a blower door. This is a piece of diagnostic equipment that Dr. Energy Saver uses to check the total airflow in a house according to uh, standards and see how much leakier it is according to what it should be according to the Department of Energy and also identify the actual uh, individual leaks. Now, uh, we know that there's tons of leaks in the ceiling of this house to the attic, but once we make the attic a conditioned space and stop that airflow at the roof level and move the insulation layer there too, we're going to have a lot less air leakage in this house. But in order to quantify it, we're going to do this blower door test and see what the total uh, air leakage in the house uh, is right now in cubic feet of air per minute. We have 11,750 cubic feet of air per minute going through that fan uh, before the job is done. That is a lot of air and that represents the total uh, air leakage of all the leaks in the house if you added them up at our prescribed uh, pressure that we test the house to, which is a standard in, in the industry. And uh, we're going to test the house after the job is complete and see what a difference we've made. This is an extreme example of uh, what multi-level attics can do. Here's uh, this room ceiling is six feet lower than this room and there's uh, a, a great room and foyer involved and so forth so you get a six foot difference and if uh, we had addressed this uh, ceiling uh, in the attic and air sealed and insulated it and addressed this ceiling and air sealed and insulated properly this one well we still have an interior space to the attic, which is freezing cold in the winter and blazing hot in the summer, that will leak air from uh, an interior wall uh, up into the attic and will be uh, not as well insulated, being that this uh, insulation does not stop airflow out of this wall. Investigating this attic, we look at this insulation bat, we say, oh, that's uh, pretty normal, bats of insulation on drywall, but in moving it aside, this is a multi-level attic and the ceiling in this room is about three and a half feet lower than the ceiling in this room and they simply uh, put insulation up to stop the airflow out of here and I can feel warm air coming out of here and we know that this insulation does not stop airflow um, and if I lift this bat up you will see how um, we have a whole room here this is a big room and we have can light fixtures and we have the interior walls all around the perimeter here that are open to this space and then that heat leaks out of uh, interior walls and all the rooms around here uh, are connected to this space and then this air leaks right up through this insulation. So major air leak and also the thermal boundary is up here but the air boundary should be the drywall although it has lots of holes in it but they're about three and a half feet apart so we have a classic problem, uh, energy problem, that is going to allow a lot of air to leak out of this house and create a lot of drafts in the lower levels as well. Because this house is so big, it took multiple days to get this job done, but now the entire attic is foamed and, you know, I, I know you're watching video here, you can't tell, but we're up here in this attic that used to be vented and it is 25 degrees out today. This, this attic would be very cold uh, at this point, but right now it is room temperature and we're not even heating the uh, attic uh, on purpose. It's just more air. It's rising from the house. It gets to the top. It's like a big cooler top, like a big thermos top uh, uh, on, on top of the house. And uh, it's room temperature pretty much in this attic. And these ducts that carry 120 degree air are not in a 30 degree attic anymore. They're in a, well, let's take a look. Our thermal imaging camera says the bottom of this roof deck is 66 degrees right now. So just a couple of degrees cooler than uh, what the room temperature downstairs. That's gonna make a huge difference in this house. We also have stopped air leakage, tremendous amount of air leakage leaking up out of the ceiling and now uh, that air is not gonna be leaking out of the top of the house. We're gonna lower the overall air leakage rate of the house and that means uh, more comfort, less drafts, uh, warmer floors downstairs, uh, uh, warmer, more comfortable house, summer and winter, lower fuel and electric bills, dramatically lower, and uh, wow, what a difference. Once all the foam is sprayed, depending on what type of foam it is, open cell or closed cell, and depending on the uh, attic configuration, a coating is sprayed over that, in some cases, not all, uh, which would be a vapor barrier or a ignition barrier or a thermal barrier uh, over the foam, depending on the application. 
The house is heated with propane, and here we have two underground propane tanks, and of course they use propane for cooking, and also there's a couple of gas fireplaces as well, but mostly it's for heating, and you know, uh, because of the work that we did in this home, the propane guy is gonna come here with his automatic delivery and say, what? I can't believe that uh, these tanks aren't as empty as they usually are, because this house is now just gonna sip propane for heating compared to what it did before we spray foam the roof. If you'd like to make your home more comfortable, more energy efficient, if you'd like to eliminate drafts, to eliminate cold floors, to make all the rooms even temperature, make your house cooler in the summer, warmer in the winter, and lower your fuel and electric bills, call Dr. Energy Saver. This is exactly what we do every single day, and the best part is the work pays for itself.